Porsche conversation, you say ready for that? David Javon, and it's in the second, eat up face of that. You gon' make me punch me a nigga, slap me a knee. Fuck a bitch, yeah, cause he was poppin'. Hey, what's going on, man? Don't sneak up on me like that. Ain't no telling what can happen. But anyways, my name is David Javon Anderson II. What brings us here is Front Porch Conversations. Yes, this is a flashback for season one, y'all. My first flashback is gonna be episode one of season one, the very first episode. So y'all bear with me. This is my this is my first. And be careful what you say, cause this is my baby. You know? I'm sister about my shit. <laughs> anyway, let's go to season one. Episode one. Thirty-two years old, and this is this is what this is what I'm starting. Front porch conversations. Why you call it front porch conversations? Growing up in um, a neighborhood, or some may say the hood, on the front porch, everybody grew up, generations grew up on the front porch. You see grandparents on the front porch, you see parents, kids. Um, when you're sitting on the front porch, you, you evaluate in your environment, you see the regulars who stay out there, you know, knowing about the cars and stuff. It's like a um, family community type situation. And also, um, Real conversations happens um, on the front porch. Funny, sad, you know, it could be deep, it could be anything. But the common denominator in all of those conversations is that it's raw. So that's why I decided to go with the name Front Porch Conversations. And I'm gonna stand on that, because I'm from that, you know? I also wanna dedicate this first episode to women and to be more specific black women because I am a black man as you can see <laughs> I prefer a woman with no kids don't shoot me don't shoot me don't be mad I know it's I, listen I got homegirls with babies uh, it's <sighs> <laughs> I know it's I know it sounds selfish, and I have to be one hundred percent honest. It's low key a selfish statement, low key, um, but it's real. It's real, and the, re the the way I look at it is because I want my first to be her first, and we can share that moment together. You know, like I don't want to be my first and just like yo third child <laughs> like it's still gonna be special because cause children, cause children are still uh, blessed regardless how they come they blessings regardless so yes I understand all that but I just want to share it's the first moment my first time with another first time and that's all that's all nothing more nothing less that's the reason why I prefer a woman with no kids no other reason what's, what's, what's wrong with him like why he's single he 32 and he's single what's his flaws I do things that if the roles were reversed, I wouldn't be mad. So it be it be those moments, you know. Um, like, how like how you did think I wouldn't be mad? Cause I wouldn't be mad, you know. If if you would have did what I, which what, what I'm being accused of, I wouldn't trip. Like for example, I'm one of those guys that um, I don't care if my uh, if my uh, lady dance go to the uh, go to a club and dance. You know, shout out to uh, COVID-19, she can't do that for a while, but <laughs> that's a little selfish, but hey, I'm going to pay the counsel. But anyways, um, if she go out to the club with her friends or whatever, or who else she go out with, I don't care if she dance with other guys. And like, like I said, I'm a black man, so I don't look at twerking, I don't, I don't, look, I don't look at twerking as sexual when it comes to dancing. Like, twerking is really just dance, nothing more, nothing less, you know? Like I said, I'm from that, so I don't really look at it sexual unless it's a sexual situation. So, I'm one of those type guys, like, I feel like when it comes to a relationship, you shouldn't have to feel that you're in a relationship. Like, when you with me, there's no, there's no shackles on your ankles, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're not chained down to me. Like you with me because you want to be with me so like you still a free individual but you just decided just to be with me and that's how i look at relationships you know so uh, i really don't trip on too much i don't trip on too much so i tend to get in trouble for doing things 
that I wouldn't trip on, but if the roles, if the, um, mm -hmm. roles were reversed, a woman would trip on. Um, mm -hmm. What's another flow I might have? Hmm. I don't know. Can't think of nothing right now. I'm an awesome guy. <laughs> <laughs> I know that was cocky. I know uh, I know that was cocky, but it's not cocky. It's confidence. I was raised right, man. I was raised right. Mm -hmm. I was fortunate to uh, be raised with both of my parents. You know, my daddy was a good role model to how a man's supposed to love a woman. And my mama was a good role model for, um, on how a woman's supposed to love a man. Ooh. That was kind of cringe-worthy for me. You know, I'm my biggest critique. Um, but it was decent, you know, it was decent, you know. I ain't gonna speak too much on season, uh, excuse me, episode one. Episode one is more like an introduction. Let's go to episode two. If I, before we go to episode two, episode two, I had a uh, guest on. She go by the name of Cecile. You know, we went to high school together. She was my prom date last minute. Uh, yeah, that's crazy how that happened, but that's a story for another time. Uh... Yeah, so episode two. Let's see what we got. Is it again to let your woman use beads, straps, or anything <laughs> near your ass? Is it my wife? Uh, yes. It's not. Uh, she she just asked the engineer. He said, um, it's it's not it's gay. It's not gay. If it's if it's my if it's my wife, right? And that's the only and person. If you who will, if you allow her to lick your gooch, eat your that. ass, that is that gay? Like, if any sexual activity. If it's between you and your wife, and your wife is a woman. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to say it like but this. If you, it's, it's big. If you <coughs> are, then you enjoying yourself. It's still got to be your wife. Right. Your wife, not your girlfriend. I'm going to put it like this. Thank you. Because she lay, uh, laid out a list. Of different activities around the area, <laughs> and some things on that list I do, okay, or have have got done onto me, okay. Oh, okay. So with that being said, I can't fully say yes, but I can't fully say no. I personally feel like it's levels, like a lick, <laughs> like like a lick. You know what I'm saying? Maybe a little no. <laughs> You might be straight. You might be straight. But if you get in paid, my nigga, you gay. <laughs> you is gay. Oh you like dick in your booty. <laughs> no, no pegging. No. If you get pegged and put like good three beads in your ass, three beads like that long. I saw I, I know how the toys look. I know how them toys look. That's true. No, three, so you taking three and she just pop them shits out your ass all slow and she. <laughs> And she peek like ground like groundhog day and she <laughs> like that's gay, bro. Like I, 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 hey, that's gay. I don't that's think gay. that's gay. That's gay. That's gay as I hell. I don't think that's gay. <laughs> that's like a rag. No, you can't win no bonnet outside. It's a, it's a lot of women who say that, but you I'm I'm a type, no I'm a type of guy. I really don't mind. I really don't Why? mind about it. Like, 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 what about you just run to the corner store real fast? You can take it off just as well as you can walk out and grab those keys. That's like you having you a do rag on. Put a hat on, like so, so today. I can, I can like, look at me today. I wash my hair mm -hmm. and I roll that shit up mm -hmm. and I put a cap on. So I that's like, that's like wearing a bonnet. With a bonnet. It's a no, hat. it's not. It's no, hats. it's not. You can wear hats as fashion. You can't wear no bonnet as fashion. Ain't no fashion in bonnets. Like, come on, keep it real. Keep it real. <laughs> no, no, it don't matter. It don't but matter. That's the comfort of your own home. I don't judge bonnets in I public. Don't. It depends where you at. At a bank, yeah, you trip. So what? She gonna take? She gonna leave the house and get in the car and take it off? No. Nope. Going to the bank? Uh, whatever uh, she do, but I'm just saying you can't wear no, a bonnet see? in the bank. See? Like, like that's a place Why? of business. Like she came out of the house with the bonnet on. No, she go to the gas station. She go to the corner store. You can go to Walgreens real fast. So that's not that's go not grab, worth the same. That's not worth the same. No, the same it's, it's a quick in and out. The same person can see you in the CVS yeah. and going to that bank I'm, with that bonnet on your I head. I right around the corner. You say something, I check you. <laughs> see, see, you can't do that. <laughs> you can't do that. Oh man. You can't. <laughs> oh man, she a fool, man. I'm not gonna lie. 
I enjoyed myself on that episode. That that, that episode was that episode was fun, man. Yeah, that was a fun episode. Yeah. I, I know it's early in the season, but by episode two, I was already feeling myself. <laughs> you couldn't tell me nothing. I got guests. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, you couldn't tell me I went not sitting in your home. For real. But nah, that, that was a good episode. I kind of like me being with somebody, you know, bounce off, you know, have a more dynamic, just me talking. Now, episode three is divided in two parts. You know, the first, uh, the first part is for the men, the second part is for the women. During this time of episode three, a lot of stuff was going on. And um, I think around that time, Tora Lanes uh, was first accused of uh, shooting Megan, Megan Thee Stallion in the foot. You know, they had that little altercation, which we don't know exactly what go on, what happened to this day, a year and some change later. Excuse me, I don't even think they went to, like, really went to court yet for that. <laughs> Ooh, excuse me. But, um, yeah. So that's what episode three is about. It's about, um, men protecting women, being a safe space for women. And the part two, which is why I address the women, it's about women knowing when to leave uh, an abusive relationship, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, women got to be accountable of um, who they choose to be with also because you got to be a good judge of character, you know? So I got on the men and I got on the women. So I divide episode three into two parts. Let's take a look. Hey, come on in, sit down. Yeah, <laughs> talking to you. Matter of fact, the ladies, y'all go ahead, have your um, bathroom break. By the time y'all come back out, I'll be ready to talk to y'all. This beginning of the conversation is gonna be for the fellas. I got something to talk to them about, so y'all ladies, please excuse us. There's no reason that a black man should put his hand on a black woman, you know? Like, it's, it's, it's no reason. I don't care what crazy scenario you come up with, what type of extreme circumstances, uh, hypotheticals you come up with? No. Because in those extreme situations, it's always a, a build up. So somewhere in between that lead up, you gotta know when to exit the situation, man. Especially if you're the type to get mad and wanna put your hands on something. Now, if you don't have that self-control to go work out or hit, hit items, you know, or Ask her where her brother at. Ask her where her uncle at. You know, find you a man to fight or something. Yo, there's too many options out there for y'all to resort to putting y'all hands on black women, man. Cause don't get it confused. Yeah, I preach never put your hands on a woman, but I'm not telling you to be a punching bag either. I'm not, I'm not saying sit there and get slapped on, get punched on, let them cut you and use weapons, whatever they do, just let them do it on you. No, no, because as a human, you'll be fooled to sit there and take all that damage. And if you the type to sit there and take all that damage, then yeah, eventually you will pop. And then it might, it might flip out and put your hands on. Look how much you endure before you got away. Matter of fact, <laughs> y'all will. If the situation happened to get physical before you're able to walk away, you got submissions. I'm going to put it in a little bear hood. You know, uh, get away from her. If she's chasing you and getting physical, you know, you might have to push her a little bit. You know, you might have to do a little push. Because I understand there's some women out there that's bigger than some men. There's some women out there that's stronger than some men. And there's some women that, uh, out there that can fight with, with the men. Like, I know some of them. Some of them are family members. Some of them grew up in the same neighborhood. You know, it, it, those are women that you know not to play with. So on that subject, that's just what it is. But if you find yourself in that situation, man, you got to know how to leave. You talking to a brother that done been slapped. I done, been, I done got punched and my eye stole off on. I had a crowbar to my head. I had to wrestle a knife out of a girl's hand. You know, like, I, I, done, I, done, had, I done ran into some crazy women. And not only that was crazy, she one girl, she was oh, she she wasn't stronger than me, but she she was stronger than what I uh expected. 
<laughs> and when I had to get that whip out her hand, it wasn't easy, goddamn. At all. I, I took a little slice on the hand and everything. But I didn't put my hands on. Hey ladies, how y'all doing? Welcome back. Excuse the aroma. But anyways, have a seat. Now women. Y'all need to know when to leave these abusive relationships. Like, y'all have a gift and a curse. And that gift and the curse is loyalty. Y'all are loyal by default. And what comes with that is sometimes y'all be in a relationship uh, and you don't know when to leave because you trying to be loyal. You trying to make it work, you know? Some of y'all women, y'all got men in your family, friends that arrive for you. I'm talking about that that shit, the whole block down behind you. And y'all go cry to them, leaning all on that shoulder, talking about how he ain't this, he ain't doing that, he put his hands on me. And then whoever that man is, he go get active towards your boyfriend but you don't leave. That dude ain't gonna keep checking that same dude that you not leaving, yo. And he shouldn't. That's not, that's not how that work. That's not how that work at all. That, that guy that you run to go end up telling you, nah, we ain't doing that. Cause you're not learning. You still stand there. Why well, look like beating up on this man? Getting my blood pressure worked up, putting my life in uh, in jeopardy because a fight can can lead to other things if they don't know how to take that air. You feel me? Like when you go fight somebody, you got to prepare to go extra miles because you don't know who you're dealing with. So you got me putting my life uh, on the line for a nigga that you can't leave alone. That's crazy. And, that, and, and it's not supposed to be like that. And another thing, if y'all in and out all these relationships, and all these goddamn relationships is abusive, it's something about you that you need to change. Yeah, I said it, because in every situation ain't got a certain level of, of accountability. So goddamn, you gotta hold yourself accountable. What is it about you, something that you doing, or, or just how you operate, attracting all these, Abusive ass man. Like, come on. And then by you dealing with so many uh, abusive men, I know you see the signs. I know you see the signs before it actually happened. Because you, 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 I ain't gonna say, I don't wanna even say you used to it. I don't never wanna say that. But you, 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 you familiar? You know, like, you know, you know what traits come with them type uh, men? So I know you see it before it happened. Come on, man, you're not that slow. I refuse to believe that you're that slow. Man, we not about to endure all that stuff y'all women be enduring. Hell no, nah, that shit ain't right, motherfucker ain't getting right, we dipping. For real. And then the ones that's not really leaving they woman that's fucked up, they cheating on them, so they're like they leaving any goddamn way. Like, come on, man. Learn from us. We learn from y'all. Learn from us. Man is not a man is not taking all that stuff that y'all take. He gon he gon he gonna check it. Try to resolve it. The shit don't change. He gonna ask himself one question: Can I deal with this for the rest of my life? The answer to that question is no. He gonna dismiss himself. Period. That's crazy. That's crazy. You can tell I felt some type of way because I even smoked a blunt on camera. You know, I, I normally don't do that on camera. Uh, you know, I, I try to keep stuff like that, doing my personal time behind the scenes and keep the business business. But um, I had to ease my nerve during that conversation, you know. And that conversation was one take straight out the head. So yeah, that's on rocking. Season one was only four episodes. So we're getting into our last episode. 
And this last episode is part of the most meaningful uh, episode to me personally because I had a guest on this episode go by the name of Ronnie. Some people might know him as Devon, but I call him Ronnie. He's my childhood best friend. I'm talking about childhood, like back, back, like high school, middle school, like and in mid I think we started in middle school, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, since middle school, and I'm 33 now, and we still rock just like how we rock back in the days, man. We still stuck together. That's my brother. You know what I'm saying? So that's why episode four is so connected to me like that, you know? I was able to share what I want to do in life with one of my best friends in life, you know? And it was a good um, feeling, a even better conversation. I'm not gonna hold your tuck your head off. Let's get into it, episode four. Excuse that shit. Yeah, he doesn't. He but he wasn't threatened. I don't know what happened. All I know is he looked Megan, she was big. He probably felt threatened. I don't know. Megan spoke her side. Megan said there was arguing in the car. Then at, at, when, when she got when she got tired of arguing, she left the car and was walking away. And he said, "Pow, pow, everybody going die." <laughs> <laughs> not, not, so that's not a threat. She was not. out the car. So he was that man. He was like, "Oh, you." Where you going? <laughs> bro, he, All right, that ain't funny. That ain't, I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah, see, bro. I don't want to do that. Yeah, that ain't funny. That. That, that, that is the tragedy. I know she uh, is um, traumatized by that. I apologize immediately. I, that's fucked up. Bro, you ain't even got a hairline. You out here popping bullets at feet, bro. Bro, that's fucked up. Come on. I don't bro. know why he did that to that girl, though. Like, it's, there's no reason. I don't understand why he had to shoot her, so I, I don't know. Out of, probably, out of ego, he probably lost the argument. <laughs> hey, 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 and she probably she probably ended the argument, little motherfucker. <laughs> with your with, with that, that's right, with your scraggling hairline. What? Well, she probably snapped on that nigga. Well, she probably with your scraggling hairline. Little bad. dude, all bigger than you. Little Man, bitch, that's why you got that security with you. Bitch, I don't need security. <laughs> 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 I'm so damn. Oh, I apologize. Nigga, Here I go again. That nigga, he, he, he messed up for that. Like all jokes aside, that that's wrong, man. Like I'm a strong believer. Don't even put your hands on them. But you, as far as shooting, I really don't see a reason for that. You know? Yeah, I don't even understand why he bought a gun to that situation. Period. Like mm -hmm. for real, for real. Like she already out the car, bro. You should have just told that motherfucker to stop on the game. A step uh, closer, Ronnie. What's going on, man? What's, up, bro? What's going on with you? Appreciate you. you. Appreciate hey, you. appreciate you, man, for blessing me with your presence, bro. Like, like I told the people, some of your titles that you hold, you no know, um, best best friend, brother. For me, I give you both of those um titles. You know what I'm saying? So, just let the people know, just a quick little background. Like, shoot, how long we been rocking, bro? Like, Shit, man, I'm, I'm about to be 32. So at least about. 16, 17 years. 16, 17, almost hitting that big boy twin. Yeah, 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 we have that, we have that. Hey, hey, talking about putting time, man. Yeah. Rocking like cut off stock. You <laughs> said, hey, you don't make too many of them, man. Right. Hey, but I ain't gonna lie, man. I'm gonna give you props on fatherhood, yo. You know, I've been on, um, I be watching you from the outside looking in, man. You know, me, be, uh, wanting to be a uh, family man in the future also, bro, you are, you is a good example to watch when it comes to fatherhood, man. So I just want to give you props for goddamn holding down your Appreciate role that. as a Appreciate father. That. You know what I'm saying? Because you beat you beating stereotypes in the world. You yeah, know, the I stereotype. To, I got to. I got to. <laughs> I can't see it no other way. Man, you know how many people just start making babies and don't do not do nothing? Yeah. Like, like literally, man, it be... One person with about five kids. He got all of them. Let's say he got four different baby moms. All right, four different baby moms, five kids. Five kids. Five kids. Yeah. Four different baby moms. He got they spit. <laughs> well, I'll shoot the club. Oh, God, that nigga hit a let, let loose. Uh -huh. I promise. Man, but listen, when you got that many different women, 
that many different kids, you don't have a personality you gotta deal with. That's just, like having just, kids. Man, listen here, boy. Ain't no way. So, your best bet, I mean, I put it like this. If all that was about one woman, it'd be a whole lot easier. Mm -hmm. Now, what's the most underrated thrills of fatherhood? Hmm. Like some shit that just off the chain, but it's underrated. A lot of people don't don't know about it, but it's really a, a thrill. I'm waking up seeing them every day. Just that? That simple? Yeah, yeah, for real, for real. I promise. It, it, just think about it, see, you just waking up one day and not being able to see none of them. Or one of them not there. Yeah. That's a whole problem. Oh, where? Where? That's a whole problem. So I, I wasn't mean, expecting that. Yeah, that and that's. And, and then you can just wake up and be able to be like, damn, they still here, boy, we still rocking. Like, I mean, everything that else happens around you is going to happen. Mm -hmm. You can't change what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. But you can't take that for granted. You really can't. You can't take that for granted, so that's so, so, right. So, so just, just seeing them waking up um, to them every day is the underrated thrill. Yeah, yeah. That's hard. That's hard. Yeah, I wasn't yeah. even expecting that answer. That's hard, yo. But big, what's the biggest lesson? That you uh, learned personally from fatherhood. Like, what, what what did you learn about yourself as an individual from mm -hmm. fatherhood? How tough I am. Because it's shit. I'm, boy, they put you in some tight spaces, boy. <laughs> you better come through. You better come through and go home, sit down, and then you go, 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 go sit over there and cry yeah. now. Because I'm telling you, you start, I put it like this now. I, 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 you start something, you better finish. Mm -hmm. just, that, just that simple. You start doing that, you better continue to do that. Now, and do it right. Yeah, it now, right. now you gonna, everybody, everybody and everything don't go right. You feel me? So it's mm -hmm. gonna be plenty of trip, you know, times you trip up and all that, but you still gotta, you gotta push to do, do better, period. Mm -hmm. I don't care what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I just ain't never come, period. That's just me. That, that's good, because um, what advice um, would you give a, f a future father or a new father that's out there? Mm. Now, one, one key advice on fatherhood. Stay in your child life. Now, I don't care what baby mama or the wife or whoever, whatever they're talking about. Now, some, sometimes it'd be like, Certain situations where it make it difficult, but just whatever you can do, just make sure try, yeah, try to stay in child life. Word, 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 word. So, marriage, man, locking down one, you know, hmm. like what that life like? What what that marriage life like, yo? It's fun. It, it's, it, it's, it's, it's a lot of shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's, okay, that, that's it's a lot of shit. So, so does being married um, make Valentine's Day better? Is Valentine's Day better being married? Man, being man, married, man, man listen, listen, out. listen, listen, listen. Valentine's Day, that shit over here. <laughs> like, for real, for real. I ain't gonna lie. That shit over here. So, so do you partake in it? She partakes in and I do it because of her. I don't that that shit does nothing for me. Like you don't, you don't be looking forward for nothing. Not God. Man, I'm a, <laughs> like, like, I like I'll be like spontaneous shit, so Valentine's Day on the on the off ass day, like that shit be like love. Like you thought Valentine's Day was some shit like man, fuck that shit. Like everybody doing the same thing, like like yeah. that shit we I I, I don't like it. <laughs> That's me. I, I don't like, it. but she likes it, so I partake in it and I make it nice for her. Okay, for me, I do. That's what's nice up. That's what's up. But I mean, that shit does nothing for me. <laughs> nothing. Hey, you kind of hurt my feelings, bro. Man, that's <laughs> enough. I guess, I, I guess I'm just the emotional one. <laughs> I, mean, bro, like, like, I, like, like, I don't I don't know the meaning behind Valentine's Day to be honest. So it, it I just express express your love to the the one you, person you love with. Nah, 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 nah. Express it like extra that day. What? You just, every day, like, like this, like, bro, bro. Yeah, but you do it extra. Like, no, you know? this is every day, bro. Every day, this shit every day, every day. You like, like, if you want to be married, you can't forget that shit. This shit every day. 
every day. You can't you can't you that's can't think too. about it like like one day this, this, this year. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's like oh yeah, I'm gonna turn up on Valentine's Day. I'm gonna turn up on Christmas. I'm gonna turn up on um, my anniversary. You can't think about it like that because then the shit get old. Mm-hmm. You know the shit gonna. Nah, like, I'm gonna pop up on a Tuesday on your ass. Then, huh? <laughs> Yeah. On oh, a Tuesday? Yeah. Going up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tear it up Tuesday. <laughs> Tear it up Tuesday. Hey, I'm going to have to write that down, yo. I like that. Tear it up Tuesday. Yeah, I'm going to have to write that down. Appreciate that. <laughs> Tell me. Hey, one main tip that you give the uh, future married people and the newly married people that's out there. Mm, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't give advice to married people at all, bro. I promise you. Stay in your lane. <laughs> do it how you do. Yeah, you feel me? Okay, like, all right. Yeah, married, like people different, bro. That's like I said, it's every day. I can't get my marriage straight. Not saying that it's it's, it's perfect. Nobody, I don't, I don't know nobody with no perfect marriage. Yeah. But word, that, that's good though. Do so. So so the tip is stay in your lane. Yeah, stay in your lane. Do it how you do it. Exactly. <laughs> stay in your lane. I like that. I like that. Yeah. And oh, uh, and pray. I mean, yeah. Keep keep God first, cause I promise. Word. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good conversation. Uh, he actually surprised me by some of his answers. You know, um, I didn't expect the conversation to go quite like that, because how we clown so hard in our regular life i didn't expect our conversation on the camera to get uh even though it wasn't like serious serious the whole time we was laughing because um, that's what we normally do but the topics and you know the, and the answers that we was given it, it, was, it was it was very serious but us naturally being funny you know you got to have a little little jokes in their hand uh every now and then so i hope you enjoy season one those were the flashbacks of my four episodes. If you want to see those four episodes in full, head to my YouTube channel, Front Porch Conversations. And I just want y'all to know one thing. I'm going to be a household name across multiple generations. I'm going to tell you another thing. Y'all know how people get statues made of them after they done pass for the greatness that they did? I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have some greatness in this world and I'm gonna get my statue before I die. Yeah, remember that. Catch your mama sell, I'm bothered. I'm bothered, I'm bothered. I'm bothered. Take off, don't need a lift. I'm bothered. Thank you, don't need a help. Don't bother. I'm beast, quiet, that's kill. Go harder. Get working, we all just slept. Go harder. Stay snare, I'm gonna step. Go harder. Good, it's all I rep. Go bother. Catch your mama sell, I'm bothered. I'm bothered, I'm bothered. Take off, don't need a lift. I'm bothered. Thank you, don't need a help. Don't bother. I'm beast, quiet, that's kill. Go harder. Working, we all just slept. Go harder. Stationary, I'm gonna step. Go harder. Hood inside, I'm